Hi, I'm Steve Brooks. I'm a principal here at UMC. Uh, our team was involved with the design and construction of the PACAR mechanical and plumbing systems that we're going to look at later, a little bit later. Um, and our involvement really was with a partnership with many other partners for the project. Um, other engineering groups consulted for mechanical um, design uh, refinement, as well as architects, and general contractors, and other trades that, that fed into the coordination to, to build the project. Uh, very critical to this also was the user groups at the Washington State University who actually used the space that the architects were designing, and that influenced what kind of systems we put into the building. And the systems we're going to look at here uh, feed very specific parts of the building and serve the end users and, and the experiments and the research and the education they're doing in the, in the spaces. So we'll start by looking at the supply air handler that serves the office space in the building. Now, this consists of the public areas, the corridors, and all the private offices along the north side of the building uh, that serve the general use space. Uh, working from left to right in the air handler, uh, the air handler is set up in such a way to provide treatment, uh, temperature control, and processing of the air from the outside for ventilation, as well as the return air that comes back to the building that gets mixed together. That mixing of air starts over on the left side in the return air fan section. That's the section where the return air comes back from the building and gets mixed with outside air for fresh air ventilation uh, and, and it gets processed through the rest of the air handler. So that's the, I believe that's the outside air intake. Uh, the relief air, so the outside air coming in uh, gets replaced, replaces the return air that's in there uh, that's coming from the building. And that relief air goes out the building in that back section as well. Moving from left to right, we go to the mixing section where that outside air actually blends with the, the return air coming back from the building. Uh, and that mixed air then is processed initially through filters that take out the, the small particles and the dust and the lint and some of the other uh, things that are in the air that want to get filtered out before it gets returned back to the space. So that cleans the air before it gets processed. And from that point, it goes through the, the first set of coils in the air handler, and these are our heating coils. These coils obviously add heat to the air. So on a cold uh, Cougar football Saturday, when you want to heat that building up, the cool air goes across those coils and it's heated up to a temperature that's adequate for supplying into the building. Uh, this building uses uh, hot water that goes through those coils to heat that air up to temperature. From that point, it goes through uh, another set of coils and those are the cooling coils. And those coils are then to cool that air down when the, the, the conditions exist. So summertime when the outside air is quite warm and the building needs to be cooled, those coils provide cooling to the air and process and bring it down to a temperature that's adequate to supply the building. From that point, it goes through a couple of control dampers, and then we go to our supply fan system. And that supply fan system consists, in this case, of six fans built up that pull that air through those coils and those filters, and, and, and then from that point, push it into the building via ductwork and distribution systems that go uh, behind walls and through shafts and such. Those fans are controlled uh, by variable frequency drives that, that turn them up and turn them down based just on what the building needs so that the energy consumed is just what's required to move that air from this processing area, this air handler, down to the spaces in the building for, for use by the terminal units that supply the spaces. Return air is okay to recycle and re, um, return back to the space because it's it's not contaminated air. It's it's, it's used for reheat and it's used for, for temperature control. Um, and we mix it with outside air to get ventilation into the space, but we can return air into an office space because it's generally still good quality air for, for breathing purposes. So the heating and cooling coils that are in this air handler are only used one at a time. On the hot days outside, the cooling coils are operating and the heating coils are off. In the wintertime, when the cold air is coming through, the heating coil is operating and the cooling coil is off. Diagram shows the heat recovery unit. And that's where we recover the heat out of the exhaust air stream. So when that 72 degree air gets exhausted through the, that third page heat exchanger, we can, instead of mixing it together and taking the heat out that way, we have a coil that takes the heat out and pushes it over to the inlet side of that lab air handler. Really, the heat recovery uh, that happens in the lab is really done with the return air in the office air handler. Because we're returning, so if you heat a building up to 72 degrees, 
the air coming back into that return air plenum is already 72 degrees and can mix with that outside air. And if you've got 72 degree return air and you've got 22 degrees outside air, you blend those together and you get a higher temperature. So you, that the heat that you're bringing back from the building preheats the outside air coming in. And we have a way so we don't have to heat 100% of that outside air up with energy. We can reuse the heat coming back from the building to raise the temperature of the outside air before we use the heating coils to heat the air up. Whereas on the lab air handling, we don't have that opportunity. Since we're not returning any air, we're bringing in 22 degree outside air and it hits that heating coil directly unless we have a way to inject heat before we heat that heating coil. So this next air handler we're going to look at is the lab air handler that serves all the lab spaces on the south side of the building, uh, top to bottom of, of PACAR. So this air handler differs from the office air handler, air handler in that it brings 100% outside air through this uh, processing uh, system and supplies 100% outside air directly to all those spaces. And the reason this lab air handler does this is to prevent any reentrainment or cross-contamination from one lab to another so that all the air going into the lab is exhausted through the exhaust air system and it discharged to the atmosphere and out away from the building such that those fumes and those that air doesn't ever get back into the building. So starting from left to right again, that outside air enters the air handler and goes through a bank of filters, uh, which takes the, the, the particulates out of the airstream. Now, different than the office air handler, this is after the filters, this is where we use what we call heat recovery coils. So we use the heat recovery coils for, for two purposes. One is to preheat the outside air as it comes across the, the filters to increase that temperature so we don't have to use as much hot water to heat that air. The other reason to use those heat recovery coils is it's almost the opposite. In the summertime, we're able to, in those hot days, we can actually cool the air down because of the cool, uh, the heat we're put, pulling out of this airstream and putting it into the exhaust air handler and exhausting the heat to the outside in the exhaust airstream. So after we travel through the heat recovery coils, on those cold days, we use the heating coil to heat that air up. Uh, and on, on warm days, we use the cooling coil to heat, to cool that air down to temperature, much in the same way we did with the office air handler. Again, only one of them works at one time, optimizing the, the consumption of energy across the air handler. Now, after the cooling coil, we go through what we, we call a humidifier, and that is uh, a, an in, a device that adds humidity and adds water to the airstream. And this is different than the office air handler, uh, of course. We do this on those cold winter days when the outside air coming in is at 22 degrees or 24 degrees, very cold air, and there's not much moisture in that air. And so when we heat that up to a temperature that's adequate for the building, that low, low relative humidity can sometimes put that air at a humidity level below what the users need to have to run their experiments and maintain their tests at the conditions that they need them to be set at. So in this humidifier section is used generally in the wintertime and it injects directly uh, steam into the airstream to increase that, su that supply air um, relative humidity level before it hits our final section, the supply fan, which is used in a very similar fashion as the office air handler. Those fans are used to, to pull air from left to right across all those devices we talked about and then push that air into the ductwork and distribution system that takes it through the shafts, down the building and into the spaces. Uh, and controlled at the at the room level for each individual lab. The 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 lab air handler doesn't have return air because contamination in the lab, if it recirculated, could bring that contamination back to the rest of the building. So the lab air handler has what's called single pass air. So all the air coming through that air handler into the lab is 100% exhausted and never returns back into the building. And then the humidifiers are there because on super super cold days. Um, when you're bringing in, you know, 22, 23 degree air, there's just not much moisture in that air. And when you heat it up, you're, then your relative humidity drops way low and you have static discharge or static uh, electricity issues. And, and sometimes the experiments in the labs require a certain relative humidity. And when you're bringing in that super cold air, you can't maintain that low end humidity without adding humidification into the airstream to get that humidity up to a level that meets the minimums for the research in the labs. Whereas offices, they don't really, it's just people complaining and getting uncomfortable, which you can deal with in 
and not have not have to. There's no critical humidity level for occupy, occupied um, spaces for people only. It's only driven off of research and those conditions for testing. Now, the the, the air handling system that serves PACAR is, is a, has the same components that were used to control the spheres and keep humidity levels constant, keep moisture off the glass, keep all those plants in their most ideal environmental setting. So pic, pic, picture this thing times 17 times, and that's the then there's six levels of humidification control that the spheres have to try and keep all those plants and everything happy and the windows from fogging up from condensation and there's a misting system and sensors all over the glass. There's a humidity question is a good one because that was really, really hard to replicate. We've we've joked about how we're trying to recreate nature and how complicated it can be to do that. However, nature just does it a heck of a lot easier than we can figure out how to do it. <laughs>